Hello, I'm Pastor Joey Rogers, and I want to welcome you to this episode of Prophecy Files Update. Recently, here in the sanctuary of Pace Assembly, I brought this Bible prophecy information in a message that deals with when the restrainer stops restraining. The power of the Holy Spirit is the restraining force in the world through the church inside of the believer. But we're watching inside of city after city and throughout our nation and the world for that matter, where lawlessness is abounding. And the Bible says when that takes place, the love of many will wax cold. These are the conditions that we're living in and you need to be informed and have an understanding of the times and know what you need to do. That's the reason why we are bringing this message to you in this format. So join me right now for Prophecy Files Update, and I'll be back at the close of this episode. This is perhaps one of the most important messages that I could bring in my lifetime. And I will tell you that there is no doubt in my mind that we are living without a doubt in the last days as is spoken by Jesus Christ himself. I wanna say a couple of things before that I dive in deeper. First of all, everything that I say today is well documented and you can find it easily. It's not just one resource, but multiple that I look to to confirm what things are being said. So all of the statistics and all of the articles and things that I will bring to you today are completely out in the open. One of the reasons why many people are remaining ignorant is because they are willfully ignorant and they don't want to read to find out what's going on. Because the spirit of fear has taken over this planet, the likes of which I have never seen in my lifetime. But I will tell you today, as the people of God, it becomes necessary for us to be like the children of Issachar. And that is that we are to know, this is one of the tribes of Israel, we are to know two things. We are to understand the times and to know, Issachar did, what Israel was supposed to do. That is a spiritual application for us. We are to understand the times we're living in and we are to know what we're supposed to do. If the righteous scarcely be saved, the Bible says, where will the sinner and the ungodly be? If the church barely, or believer barely gets by in their walk with the Lord, where does that leave a world today? I want you to understand that everything that I'm about to tell you there may be some that are even offended and some that don't want to hear it. I never thought that I would see the day when we would come to the point, even while I was still on this planet, that people would not endure sound doctrine but heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. There's two groups of people, those that want to be informed and understand what's going on, and then those that want to willfully live ignorant as I drove past houses and peoples today on the way here. I was reminded of the fact that even as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And here's the facts. That it wasn't raining the day that Noah and his family went into the ark, but the promise of rain and judgment was to follow. People were buying and selling, giving in marriage, doing whatever they wanted to do, just like I saw today. There, some cutting their grass and watering their lawn and, and taking out trees and, and doing whatever they want to do. And that's exactly the conditions that it's going to be when the sudden event that is next on the calendar of God that is a signless event will take place called the rapture of the church. I must say to you today that you're sitting in a rare place because the bottom line is, is that 98%, according to the statistics, 98% of the pulpits of America will not touch Bible prophecy or the book of Revelation. So what you're hearing today is not heard by and large around the world and from most pulpits. Most people want, and preachers in the time we're living in, to try to, to uh, corral people and try to even get them to come to church during this COVID time, of which this past week the statistics have gone up that one plus out of six people will not return back to church at all. And that Tom Rainer who is one of the pollsters of the Southern Baptist Convention, said that there will be, as he amended it from a few weeks ago, there will be 10,000 churches before December that will shutter their doors never to open again. So if the righteous scarcely be saved, where will the sinner and the ungodly be? There will be plenty in this presentation and this message that I bring to you today that will cause your hearts to weep and perhaps 
even get discouraged. But if you'll stay to the end of this message, I promise you, for the people of God, this is the most encouraging message that you could ever hear in your life. I could preach to you about your marriage getting together or you getting your finances together, pay your tithes, your offerings. I could preach to you about how to keep your mind in tune with God and I could teach you how to love one another and preach to you and the Bible is full of all that. But nothing will cause you to get your marriage together, to get your mind right, to love one another no matter what their race, color, or creed is. To be able to serve the Lord with gladness and look for his imminent return like the message of the imminent return of Jesus Christ. It'll make you get your mind right. If you knew you only had a few hours to be able to make things right with your family, how many of you would need to get on the phone right now and call somebody? Don't raise your hand. Because I can tell you whatever it is that would push you to that point, you need to do it right away. The urgency of the hours upon it. And for many people that have heard me preach in Prophecy Files before, this one today is unlike any other that I've presented in my multiple years of doing this. When I say that it made me quake in my shoes, I'm telling you what I'm going to bring to you today is not only serious, but we are closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ than what we could ever believe. I want to speak to you for a few moments this morning about when the restrainer stops restraining. When the restrainer stops restraining. We just read about it in 2 Thessalonians. Change is happening so fast that somebody said, what is the new normal? I'll tell you what the new normal is. Change. If you're not used to things changing quickly, you better get used to it. Because one moment you wake up and, and everything's fine to do this right here. And the next day you get up and everything's changed just like that. Time and change are two of the constants that are in this earth. Time is going to keep on marching on. And change is going to happen so rapidly. And that alone is one of the signs of the last days. The Bible says that knowledge would increase, transportation, all those kind of things. And if seeing what you're seeing right now in the streets of America and around the world and the events that are taking place has got you in a place of fear or it's got you in a place of uh, I don't know what to do or uh, what is anybody going to do? What are we going to do with the situation around us? If that's where you are today, then I suggest that you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life right now. Right now, before I even go on with this message, you better make him the Lord of your life. Because ladies and gentlemen, if you can't handle what's going on right now, you certainly won't during the tribulation period. What you're seeing right now is tremors to the tribulation. That is going to be far worse than anything that you've seen that's going on right now. The Bible says in the last days, Jesus said in Luke 18, 7 and 8, and shall, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? The things that I'm about to show you in the articles and the categories of the signs of the times that I've broken down for you are just a small drop in the bucket. There's no way that I could bring everything, even that I have studied, to the table for you to be able to understand. It's a small smidgen of just what's going on in our world, but it's a sample to let you know. I want you to understand that I don't preach from the newspaper to confirm the Bible. I preach from the Bible, and it's confirmed by the news that's going on on your daily internet. So what I'm saying to you is Bible-based, not press-based or media-based. And I want to just say this before we get any further to Jesus wins. Whatever it looks like right now, Jesus will win. And those that will walk with him by faith will be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves you. God has not appointed the church under wrath, but that does not mean that man is not going to stir up the wrath. And there may be things that we as the church and believers have to go through between now and the rapture of the church. The restrainer who is, and I will go ahead and tell you, is the Holy Spirit inside of the life of the believer functioning through the church, as found in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, has been here since the day of creation. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
The Bible tells us down in verse 2 and 3 that the Word was there present and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of the Lord moved and the Spirit of the Lord was the mover and the restrainer. It was darkness all around, but the Holy Spirit came in and pushed back the darkness and God said, let there be light and there was light. He's been restraining lawlessness and darkness ever since that day in our behalf. For generations and and decades and centuries and thousands of years, the Holy Spirit has been doing this because of a long-suffering God who's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But there is a time, and I believe that this has been in my spirit now for months, there is a time that we're in right now when the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, will stop restraining evil and darkness. And he will do that because of the Scripture, and we'll show you here in a few moments, of the fact that people begin to fall away and love not the truth anymore. And when people do not have interest, I'm talking about God's people. I'm not talking about that world. I'm talking about God's people lose interest in God and forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But the Bible admonishes us that so much the more as we see the day approaching. When it's not interesting to you anymore and you begin to be falling for deceit. Before God loses the entirety of his collective elect. The restrainer will have moved out of the way. We're here at this moment when the restrainer, whether you know it or not, even in spite of all that's going on, is restraining darkness like we have never seen before. But it is encroaching. I'm not so sure that there are some cities that are in the United States right now that the restrainer has backed off because he can't find 10 in the city. It's been interesting to me to find out that many governors have said that you can't gather any more than 10 in that congregation. 10. Isn't that interesting that they would select 10? Why not 9? Why not 5? Why not 14, 18, 10, 10? This is the same number that God calculates our tithe, our offering. It's the same number that says if you have a tenth of that city, I will spare that city. But in the twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, they could not find ten righteous, and so judgment came. I'm going to share with you some categories of signs that I see that are on the forefront this morning. And all of them will be based out of Scripture. Here are some general signs of what's going on according to Bible prophecy. There will be, the Bible says, population explosion that's happening right now. There's 7.5 plus billion people on this planet which is part of the problem, they say, with climate change. Increased knowledge, according to Daniel 12, 4. Increase of violence, the Bible says, would be marking the last days. Increased transportation, in other words, will be going to and fro, the Bible says. Some of the things that are not on uh, the articles here today, I'll just let you know they're working on a, another supersonic jet that can get you in a couple of hours into Europe. This is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Rapid disintegration of society, according to 2 Timothy. Increase of birth pains. The birth pains of a woman that's travailing with, uh, with child. Uh, those things coming sooner, faster, closer together. I want to show you the timeline of the events that are about to take place. This is the sequence of order. And I want you to understand that the pre-tribulation rapture of the church is what the Bible uh, is uh, teaches us. There are many people that are believing today that it is a mid-tribulation rapture or even a post-tribulation rapture. And let me make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. The pre-tribulation rapture would mean that before the seven years of tribulation, Jesus Christ would come. That's what I believe the Bible teaches. It's also what I believe uh, uh, that this, of course, this church teaches that. It's what I preached. And I believe that to be fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Some believe it will be in the three and a half years 
earmark when the Antichrist exposes himself as the Antichrist. And some believe it will be at the second coming. They want to equate it with the second coming, the Battle of Armageddon, Revelation chapter 19. Well, it is the pre-tribulation rapture that fits right into the biblical prophecies. And if you want to look at what that looks like, everything surrounding that deals with the nation of Israel. Nothing fits the pattern of what happens to Israel uh, in the seven years of tribulation like that of the pre-tribulation rapture. So here we are. For those of you that don't know what the sequence of events, God uh, has already outlined the end from the beginning. I want to say that again. He outlined the end from the beginning. He knows the end from the beginning, the Bible says. And why is that so important? Because God has already written the book. He's already closed the book. And it's already written down and it's going to happen exactly like God says. And so here is what God said is going to take place. We are living in the present age right now. The rapture of the church is about to take place. It is a signless event. And I say that to you because what I'm going to share with you are signs concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But ladies and gentlemen, the rapture will not have any signs according to the scripture. So what I'm sharing with you is going to be signs of his second coming right here. It's important for you to realize the rapture takes place. We, the church, every believer, every Christian is lifted off of this people planet in a sudden interruption, a sudden snatching away. You'll leave everything behind. There will be no cars, no U-Hauls. There will be nothing that you'll take with you. Naked I came into this world, Job said, and naked I will leave. You're going to get some brand new clothes. It's called the glory of God like Adam and Eve had in the beginning. We will be taken to the judgment seat or the bema seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb. And for seven years, the church will abide in heaven. While on this earth, all of hell will break loose during the seven years of tribulation. I remind you now that what you're seeing happening in the streets of America and the pandemic and everything else that's going on is nothing compared to what it is going to be like during this time of the seven years of tribulation. And because of the seven years tribulation is a given period of time to say that Jesus could come back and we don't know the day nor the hour when he will come again to say that it's at the end of the tribulation period is absolutely not biblical. Now what does take place? For seven years we spend what would be the equivalent of seven days as it would be in the scripture. That's happening in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hell on earth happening during the seven years of tribulation, the pouring out of God's wrath. And then all of a sudden the armies of the world gather together under the, under the leadership of the Antichrist in the battle of Armageddon in the valley of Megiddo. In that location they will gather together and the Bible says that the blood will rise to the horse's bridle. But before all of humanity is wiped out, there's going to be an interruption. That interruption is going to be Revelation 19, Jesus Christ coming back on a white horse with all of the saints of God of all of the ages riding with him. This is important for you to understand because in the sequence of events, what you're seeing right now and what many people in the media and even Christian people are saying is this Armageddon. Are we in the tribulation? Are, is this the four horsemen of the apocalypse? And is this pandemic the black horse rider that's coming? Absolutely not. Before any of this could transpire, there must be the sequence that I will share with you in a few moments and the revealing of the Antichrist. The Armageddon, battle of Armageddon will be the battle of all battles where God himself, Jesus Christ, riding on a white horse with a sharp two-edged sword, the word of God coming out of his mouth and blazing eyes like fire, his robe that's been dipped in blood and on his vesture is written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Help me not to stop and preach a little bit right here, but I'll be riding with him and he'll probably have to say, Rogers, get back, I'm the leader of this parade. He comes down and destroys the Antichrist and all the armies of this world that are against him and of his kingdom will come the thousand year millennial reign where he will sit on the throne of his father David. I've walked across the Kidron Valley. They walled up the eastern gate, ladies and gentlemen, and said that they've heard the Messiah is going to return. So they planted a graveyard right out in front of it, walled it up, the Muslims did, and said there won't be any Messiah walking through here. But Jesus will walk across the Kidron Valley just like he did when he was exiting. He'll come right across that valley, walk right through the eastern gate, blow that thing wide open. The graveyard will have no one in it because all of the Jews that their feet are planted towards the eastern gate literally get up and walk with him right on into the city and he'll sit down on the throne of his father David 
He will judge the nations and the lamb will lay down with the lion. The child will pick up the adder and it won't bite him. It will be a thousand year millennial reign. And after that thousand years, the enemy, Satan, is loosed a little bit and he tries to attempt another overthrow. But with the power of God and the fire and brimstone from out of heaven, the book already says this, he will be destroyed and cast into the lake of fire with the beast and the false prophet and everybody else who will go with them. The great white throne judgment will take place and every person that has rejected Jesus Christ, both living and dead, will rise to meet God himself, be judged by the word of God you hold in your lap today. And because you have rejected Jesus, not because you didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't chew and go with those who do, because you rejected Jesus Christ, you will hear those awful words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, lawlessness, I never knew you. Cast into the lake of fire by the millions and billions, they will fall into an endless fall into the abyss, and there'll never be an escape. Eternity is a long time without God. And then God is going to recreate the new heavens and the new earth and he will make it like it was in the brand new beginning of time and God himself will be our God and of his kingdom there shall be no end. I plan to be right there in the city of God. Say amen somebody. What's happening in our world? Coronavirus has taken over our society right now. Here it is that there is uh, the, the things that are happening in our world we have never seen before just like this. This, and I will say this to you now, this is a linchpin for the new world order coming in. Now, I'm saying to you that the virus is very real and people have died and people are suffering with it today. There is no doubt about it. But my friends, the statistics, and you can check them out yourself, show very clearly that there's far many more deaths that are occurring in different other categories than what this coronavirus has been doing. Now, I'm going to tell you my personal opinion right here about this. This is my personal opinion. You, so you take uh, everything else and hold that to the Bible. But this is my personal opinion that this is bioterrorism. There was a, an arrested professor of a, you know, a United States college that was arrested going into the Wuhan labs. These things can all be found out online. Check it out in two or three resources. I will proceed. What's the deal with this virus and the evolution of this pandemic? Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt the Word of God lets us know more than 127 times in the Word of God concerning plagues, pestilence, and those things being mentioned in the Word of God. Does God allow those things to take place? He most certainly does to get the attention of the people. All you got to do is read the book. Just read the Bible. God allows it to get the attention of His people. How important that it is that we pay close attention and don't get caught up in the fear of all what is going on right now. Let's look at the signs in the nations. Here's what the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verse number 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the, of the sword and shall be led away captive unto all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles of the times of the Gentiles being fulfilled and there shall be signs in the sun signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth watch this distress of nations with perplexity please notice this we have not seen two hurricanes come into the gulf in our lifetime but here we have experienced what the scripture says and the sea and the waves roaring Let's take it a little bit further right here. Men's hearts, watch this, failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Please notice these scriptures that concern uh, the nations. These scriptures let us know what is happening from the Bible perspective and it leading up to the coming of the Lord. The reestablishment of Israel, Arabs' hostility towards Israel is growing, and yet there are peace plans that I'll talk to you about in just a moment. Russia is still a menacing power to Israel. Asian nations, China, with a 200 million man army, they're the only ones on the planet that could do that. Here is wars and rumors of wars, kingdom against kingdom. 
This is ethnicity against ethnicity. So far before anybody started talking about race wars and all of that, the Bible was already describing it in Matthew 24. The reunification of Europe, which will come out, uh, uh, will be a unified uh, grouping of people which will make up what will be in Daniel's writing, the old Roman Empire, and out of that will come the Antichrist. And one of the most important things you can understand, both in Daniel 2 and multiple other passages of Scripture, is we are moving to toward a one world economy, here's what it says. This is the leader, Gordon Brown. He's the ex-prime minister of, of uh, the United Kingdom. Gordon Brown calls for a global government to tack the coronavirus. This is a leader calling for the global government. Here's another leader right here calling for a global government. The UN chief says this, the UN secretary general initiates a new global deal for a fairer world order. Now, we've heard about New World Order since George Bush, the first uh, president, said, I'm bringing about, we're going to bring about a New World Order. But that evolution has picked up speed like we have never seen in our lifetime. This is important for you to get a hold of. Please note this. This is what else is happening in the nation. The, according to the article, experts are warning a horrible surprise coming with a United States-China war within six months. You don't think that because of what's happening in the economy of the United States and the crashing of the Chinese economy and the blame being put on them for the Wuhan virus and multiple other things that they're just going to sit there. They have been controlling. Please go home. Please go home and just turn over everything. Your toothbrush, your toothpaste. Turn over the vase and the lamp and everything else and read at the bottom. Made in China. Made in China. Made in China. Everything has been made in China including all of the medications that you take on a regular basis. Most of the antibiotics and so forth is made in China. If we knew which uh, location they were, we might be apprehensive to be able to even uh, take some of that stuff. But I can tell you that they're not going to sit here, especially this past week when they launched into the South China Sea a missile to let America know that we're still here and we're ready and preparing ourselves for war. The Bible says that 200 million man army is going to come out of the east. And so you need to get ready for that. Because the provocative things that are taking place in China right now is a signal right out of the Word of God. In fact, take a look at this map. Because many people have said a few days ago, and for those of you that are not familiar, in this area right down here is where the UAE is of this new peace deal that's taking place. But this map describes and shows you the war of Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38 and 39. These nations are named in the Word of God specifically as those that are going to come against the nation of Israel from the far north and all of the east, west, and the south. That's what is happening. And regardless of how many peace plans are made, this war is going to take place according to the Scripture. So let me say it like this. When you see the king of the north, which is Russia, coming down toward the Middle East and through Syria as they've already set up a camp and they're never going back, Russia has got a place located there. And you see the king of the east, China, pushing towards the Middle East. And you see the king of the south, which is the Arab nations and Islam. And you see the king uh, of the west, the old Roman Empire and Europe rising up. When you see those things taking place, lift up your heads. Jesus Christ is coming in a moment that we think not. Let's look at signs in nature real quick. According to the article right here, or the statement, does God speak through nature? If you'll read your Bible, you'll find out that God allows and uses nature to get the attention of people. What are we seeing right now? All you've got to do, I mean, our own uh, weather forecaster here, right here in uh, Pensacola said a few days ago when he saw two uh, hurricanes coming up, he said, never in my lifetime of forecasting have I ever seen anything like this. This is historical. This is unprecedented. And all these words that are being used, I have in my, in my satchel in the back uh, the book, The Vision, written in 1973 by David Wilkerson. And I will tell you, all of these things were predicted, even the statements that are coming out of the weather forecasters' mouths. What's going on? Here's what the Bible says would take place prior to the coming of the Lord. Watch this in Scripture. He said that there would be, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, that there would be famines and earthquakes, plagues, signs in the heavens. You know that 
The United States government has now set up a hotline for those that might see UFOs anywhere. So you can report your UFO sightings. I can tell you, Pastor, you believe in UFOs? I absolutely do. I already know what they look like, too. They got six wings. With two, they cover their feet. With two, they cover their eyes. And with two, they fly through the heavens and they cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I'll save that for another day. Unusual signs in the heavens, droughts and famines and flood and fire unprecedented. So what's going on today? Let me give you a little short rundown of the events that have been happening even since uh, the beginning of this year. How many of you, I, I don't even need to ask this question, how many of you would like to go ahead and pass from this point straight into 2021? You don't raise your hand because you're afraid to know what is 2021 going to bring, right? Here are some things that are happening. Locust plague of biblical. These are headlines of, of articles not written by Christian authors. Locust plagues of biblical proportion threaten the African famine. Uh, an African famine. Now they're all over the place, and different breeds of them are all over the place in China right now. Locust plague. Locust. World economy projects to shrink for the first time since 2009. Historic unprecedented flooding swamps the southern United States. It says global crop failures continue. That was in February. That was before the Iowa hurricane force winds that came through that wiped out the corn crop. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why you need to be a people prepared. Because the uh, corn crop and the grains that we typically get not only to eat, but to replant, have been wiped out in such an unprecedented way through Iowa, through a uh, Draco storm, they call it, that is the equivalent of 100 plus mile an hour winds that went through there and flattened the corn crop. We're the breadbasket of the world in many cases, and that's the reason why you're going to see uh, different things rising and limited supplies in the days that are ahead. Astronomers discover 11 different asteroids that it can pack the earth. How many of you are encouraged right now? Here's the health watch. This one caught me. I just threw this one in here just because. Because the other day we got Corona, we got H1N1, we got swine flu, we got uh, stinging hornets, and, and we got all kinds of stuff going on. West Nile virus that's back in the state of Florida. All this stuff going on, and then somebody has to go out and find the one squirrel <laughs> that tested positive for the bubonic plague. America's natural disasters are on the rise. This is what the Bible said would take place. Just one thing after another uh, in, in 2020, the COVID pandemic going on, this is the worst. We were at the highest level in our economy since the Great Depression. And with the COVID virus, we sunk to the lowest levels back to 1930 of the Great Depression. 57 million people have been unemployed, have lost their jobs, or are filing for un unemployment. And uh, many of them have returned back, but there's still a host of people that have yet to do that. We have watched as there's been race uh, riots in the streets and the killing of George Floyd that set off a trigger point throughout our nation now where people cannot even communicate with one another. Why is the church still here? if we can't come to the table and help people realize that there's hope in Jesus Christ. It's not enough to sit in our churches and sing songs and hear sermons and then to go out there and still be affected by everything else and not be salt and light. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to stop right now as the pastor of this house to tell you that your job is not whatever your job is. Your job first is a believer and to get out of the highways and hedges and let people know about Jesus Christ and let there be a healing in our land. And if the church doesn't do it, then who is? The massive storms in Iowa, 14 million acres wiped out in Iowa's farmland. They're recording now the highest temperatures in modern history that has been recorded, especially in Death Valley, California. 12,000 lightning strikes in California that have set off wildfires that they have said this is historical and biblical proportion. These are the words coming out of their mouth that's burned over a million acres, three times the size of any previous fire. 
And then we get hurricanes in the Gulf. When I saw those twin hurricanes coming into the Gulf of Mexico, I said, Jesus is coming. What's going on with these spiritual signs? Here's what the Bible says. Here's some of the negative ones to start with. The things that are going to happen in the last days. Look for these things. They're happening right now. He says there would be false Christ and prophets and cultic groups coming up. Apostasy of professing churches. Widespread heresy in the church. A one world religion with one world economy. So forth. Persecution of true believers. Outbreak of demonic and occultic activity. Have you seen so much satanic, demonic activity taking place on, your, on the movie screens and on regular television and so forth? It's happening unprecedented. Here's some positive things. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to take place. The Bible said it will happen in the last day. A revival of Davidic worship. In other words, we're not sitting around just singing songs, but we're entering into the presence of God on a level that we have never before. That's the promise of God's Word. Widespread worldwide evangelism taking place. Don't look for revivals that we have seen in the past, but there's going to be, and I believe and I prophesy that Pace Assembly will be one of those oasis, a place where people can come and get fresh water and fresh Word, and they may have to go back to wherever they're coming from but oh God let this be a place where people can get a fresh drink of the living water who is Jesus Christ in these last days come on say amen somebody all of these things taking place here's something that's advancing the technology look at this how many of you ever heard of Elon Musk Elon Musk some of you may know who it is Uh, the Tesla cars and so forth this brainiac has now said that we have come up, and I brought this to you, a prophecy file, several months ago now. He said he's going to develop a chip that can be implanted inside of the brain and can help. Watch this. Everything about the Antichrist system is going to be something that people embrace. It's going to be something that helps. Okay? The swiping of your card right now. If I took up an offering of cash in this building right now, it probably wouldn't be very much because most of you are not carrying cash in your pockets right now. What's the point? Everything is going to be embraced for your good and security. I hope that you've enjoyed this portion of the Prophecy Files update. I've recently brought it to the congregation here and we wanted to share it with you. I encourage you to share this out on the social media platform and to be able to have the understanding of the times and know what you need to do as a believer. I want to encourage you to let the Word of God dwell inside of you uh, strong day after day and be a person of prayer because this is a season like we've never seen before and we need Jesus Christ more than ever before. I encourage you to check back regular on our Pace Assembly app and the other social media platforms for more of this Prophecy Files update. Share it out to your friends and family. Get them informed and be ready because I believe Jesus Christ is coming soon.